Hi, Master Gardeners. I'm here in a client's yard, actually another Master Gardeners. Take a look at this honey locust over their patio. Look at this guy. He's been defoliated by a worm. Look how bad the foliage looks. This actually happens to be a tree with indeterminate growth, so it's already made some new foliage. But look how thin the canopy is. And can you look over here on the deck and see all the brown leaves that are on the deck? It is so unsightly, all this damage that's on the ground. The deck is covered with brown leaves. Everything's covered. And the one characteristic of this webworm, of this, webworm this is actually a mimosa webworm, is there's little stringies that the worms hang down. So when they're out here in the mornings eating their breakfast, there's little caterpillars crawling in their hair. So the little silky worms can be quite an annoyance. So with this level of devastation on their tree, they're gonna take some action next year. Right now, the damage is completed. They did have an arborist come and look at this, an IPM specialist actually, and they're recommending um, to watch and see what happens next spring. It would be a treatment then. Too late now to spray, so you would never invest money into having any controls done now. So let's do a zoom in and look real close, and we'll see, He's, there's no caterpillars right now, no webworm caterpillars now, but here's what the damage is. It's skeletonizing. So you can see in here the little silky webs. Let me try to pull it apart. Of course, this one is not as good, but there is some silky webbing and there's, you, you probably can't see, but there is little bits of frass inside of there. And they've skeletonized the leaves. This is a compound leaf. You can see they're naked. This caterpillar lives in here and they, they make their webbing and they stay inside protected from birds and predators while they're feeding on the foliage of the tree. And on this particular tree, they've devastated probably 98% of the foliage on this honey locust. There are certain honey locusts that are more prone to this mimosa webworm, and it happens to be the sunburst. This cultivar of honey locust is not a sunburst though. Um, she's not sure what cultivar she actually has, but it's a mimosa webworm will get on mimosa trees, but it also inhabits all of your honey locust trees, so it can be problems. But it reminds me a lot of this one that you're seeing now along the roadsides. You know what this webbing is? This is on an oak tree, commonly found on walnuts and all the cherries on the roadside. This is the, one of the webworm full cult, uh, species. This also has two generations. Both of these webworms have two generations in the season. That mimosa webworm does one in June and then follows again usually in July. He's already done in this yard. This one is doing the same thing. Let me show you what the caterpillar looks like. Same type caterpillar on the two. Here he is. Here's the little caterpillar, less than an inch in size. This one happens to be yellow. On the Fall webworm, you can have a yellow caterpillar or you can have a brown caterpillar and the head color can be different. They have red heads and black heads, but that's the standard size of the caterpillar right there, just a little small guy. They make the webbing, they feed inside the webbing, and they just keep making the webbing larger and larger, and they do the what's called skeletonizing, which you can easily see on this oak leaf. Skeletonizing means they're smart enough to not eat the coarse pieces. They don't want to eat the stems of the veins of the leaf they just eat in between the veins and the skeleton of the leaf is left behind so this is your fall webworm feeding inside this mass if you were to get these in your yard usually this does not damage the long-term health of the tree so you don't have to worry about controlling fall webworms last year i got so many calls because the fall webworms were all over our roadsides but we don't have to control that because anything that eats the leaves on your tree in late July and August and September, guess what? It's not gonna hurt the long-term health of your tree. We don't have to worry about it. The tree is already finished. It's flowering and producing most of its fruit. And most of the time, that's not gonna damage the tree at all. So anything that happens in late summer, you just say, oh, give it up for loss. It's gonna lose its leaves in October anyway. We've already done the hard part that the tree had to perform the flowering and the fruiting. That's all done. So if it loses its leaves early, tra-la, it'll come back next spring and do it all again. So we don't take action against fall webworms. So there you go. I hope I covered most of the facts that you wanted to know. Two generations, don't bother to spray them. If you did feel like you had to control them, in my tree, I scratched them out and opened them so the birds could get inside and eat the caterpillars. That's one method if it's a small enough tree. And the other method would be to dust them with a 
organic product called Bacillus thuringiensis, just called BT. So it can be dusted with that, and that's a good control for caterpillars. You have to catch them while they're developing, but it will control caterpillars. So there you go. There's some webworm facts. Watch for them on your roadsides.